Hi there, and welcome to the Everyday Millionaire Mindset Matters podcast. Stephanie, welcome. Hey, hon. So we have an amazing topic, I think, today. And the topic is intentions. And what the heck does that even mean? We've talked about it several times on the podcast. It's come up. I came across a Teal Swan video who we follow and uh, are fans of some of Teal's work, or a lot of Teal's work, actually. She expanded on it, and it inspired me to then dig into it, unpack it a little bit more, and then you and I had some conversation around it. And I think it's a really awesome conversation. Well, the power of intention. When you think about intention and goals and outcomes, I think the the missing piece for a lot of people when they're setting goals and they're wanting to make change in their life is that they miss the power of it setting a powerful intention. Well, I think there's a couple of different things, right? Which is, you know, we think about intentions and we set intentions, but there is the next layer of what is behind those intentions. And so what does it mean to set an intention and where is the kind of, I guess, the foundation that you're building on that on that intention on, where is that foundation? Are you aware that you have an, a foundation for it? And most people, I think, don't. And occasionally we get lucky and we hit it and we don't even realize that we did it. And that's really what I want to get to in this particular podcast is what's below just the phrase, let's set an intention, because what's behind the intention is more intention. It's more specific or there's specificity in the intention. And that's what I want to get to today. I think it's really quite profound. I agree. And for me, which is the timing is perfect because I just got home from Japan from the world championships of figure skating just this week and a little bit upside down around uh, time zones and jet lag and all of that fun stuff. But what really came and really landed this morning when we were talking about you know, setting intentions and possibly doing this podcast is that there's not a meeting that I do, whether it's with a business coach, a client or a skater, or even sometimes, you know, when we're just sitting around chatting, what is the, I always ask, what is the intention of this call? What's the intention of this meeting? And I try to explain it. I try to unpack it. I try to describe what intention is and why it's so important. But I think if we can define it, and describe it and actually use some real life scenarios, I think people are really going to get how powerful this concept is. Well, I think that's the best thing to do is let's lead with a couple of examples. And having you just got back from Japan and when you're setting, you know, you're spending a lot of time with your athletes leading up to any competition, but on an ongoing basis, part of what you train in terms of that mental performance is being clear because we set intentions every day or Oh, at least we should be, or I don't want to use the word should, but when we don't set intentions, our day can get away with us and we, from us. And then we end up being totally reactive as opposed to being constructive and really pragmatic in our thought process. So let's give a couple of examples of what we're talking about when we are talking about intentions and then start to unpack it. So we'll use the athlete as an example. I'll start high level and then I want you to take it and kind of run with it from there. So high level You've got two athletes both going to the same competition. Or you could have, in your case, two pairs. Uh, dance teams going. They're going to Worlds. They're both competing for a spot on the podium. One's going because they really intend to win. They're competitors. They're going for gold full stop. The others may have won the competition in the past. They're not as concerned about winning Worlds, but they do want to place. They really are concerned about can I get to Olympics? So it comes from a slightly different place. They both intend to win, but one's going, I'm focused. I'm going to pull all stops. The other's going, okay, really, it's not about winning. It's about making sure that I get the points I need to qualify for Olympics. That, now, that may be a really bad example, but I'm just trying to pare it down. Start high level. Yeah. Let's go down. No, that's a really good example because it's not just two teams, for example, having two different intentions. There's also the team within the team. So so once we talk about the two teams and their uh, two different intentions, I also want to talk about having a partnership or uh, a team or a couple having misaligned intentions. So I just want to plant that seed. So back to your comment about two different teams. So and that's actually a real case scenario. One of the things that I always say to my clients is that I can only coach you to win. I don't know. I don't know how to coach you to be second or third. I coach you to win and I coach every single team to win. And that's not normal in the world of sport or business. 
But when you think about it, competing is a way for you to really challenge yourself to be your best self, to, to live your best life. So in a competition environment, by setting a powerful intention and being aligned with that intention really gives you that roadmap. So let's start with the athletes that are saying, okay, I want to win. And even if they're not even on the radar to win, it's not their year, so to speak, or maybe the timing's not there. But when you set a powerful intention to win, doesn't mean you're setting it to beat somebody else. You're setting it to win so that you have the most opportunity to make sure you get the feedback that you need, the coaching that you need, the, co the organization that you need in order to get yourself to the top of the podium. The second team was saying, well, you know, we just want to skate our best. We want to make sure we, but it, we want to uh, qualify for the Olympics, et cetera. So they've got a bunch of parameters, which is fine, but the intention isn't clear. So what happens is that they skate a little bit hesitant or they compete a little bit hesitant. The other team is full throttle. They're going for it. Whether they win or not, it doesn't matter because by having that powerful intention, the opportunity or the chances of them winning or placing higher than they thought they would is a lot higher. The ones that are just being a little bit more wishy-washy or saying that I just want to be maybe top five, top 10, then it creates this window that other things can come in to create distractions. So the, again, the power of intention is it's not like you're winning to beat other people people which is a really you know, it's a benefit of winning and competing but it's giving you the opportunity to get the feedback and the information that you need to make the choices that you make in order to get your goal so it aligns the purpose i for me it's a universal alignment i don't just do anything without setting an intention i don't get out of bed without setting an intention so uh, yes exactly but let's keep unpacking this thing. i'm going to use an example that just came to mind as we were speaking because a few years ago we went to play tennis we went to a tennis school now this particular uh, resort that we were at had an academy there a tennis academy there world-class tennis academy and seven-year-olds to 18-year-olds i mean it was funny watching seven-year-olds play tennis the racket was as big as they are, at least half the size that they were. It was really funny. But as I talked to the general manager, you know, I said to him, I said, so, you know, if dad's got a big enough checkbook that he can scratch a check, can I bring my kid to this academy to play tennis? He goes, oh, no, no, no. It's not the way it works. He goes, if you walked up to any one of those kids right now and said, what's your intention? Why are you here? They would look at you without any stop, no hesitation. They look at you and they go, because I want to be the best in the world. So that's way different than I'm going because my dad wants me to play tennis. And so he's got the money. So he paid for it. So I'm here, make him happy. It's fun playing tennis. That's a way different intention than saying I'm going to be the best in the world. And actually that is your intention as opposed to, I'm just here to have fun, you know, get through this, play tennis, have a good time, meet some girls, whatever the story might be, meet some boys, whatever. But the point is, two, they're at the same camps. They're literally training, but they have a totally different intention behind it. Same coaches, different intentions. And so when you start to unpack that a little bit more and you see it with your athletes, and we can talk about it in business, in relationships, in friendships, and we're going to keep using these examples because I think it's really important to be clear on the intention and the difference between a very clear intention and a kind of ambiguous or vague intention at best and how it impacts relationships so well. We'll get that in a minute. So tell me a little bit more when you're at in Japan, you're at a world a competition, you're seeing other countries, not all of them are skating with you. It seems that they all are, but they're not. What is the difference that you see, for example, between your gold medalist, let's just use that as an example, and somebody who's bronze or who should have been at the top of the podium somewhere and didn't make it. Can you kind of identify or share some insights into that attitude or that view of the world that they might have? I can. And I thanks for that. Because what happens when you set a powerful intention? So I want to go to the world championships. I want to be an Olympian. I want to go to the Olympics is very different than saying I want to compete at the Olympics. I want to place at the Olympics. I want to be on the podium at the Olympics or I want to I want to win. So if you want to go to the Olympics, if I hear that languaging, for example, from an athlete, I'll go, sure. Can I can I buy you a ticket? You know, anybody can go to the Olympics. 
Oh, so the intention has to be specific. So when even when people are doing some generic goal setting, they say you have to have smart goals. It has to be specific and measurable. It has to be attainable, etc. That's great. But we're talking about something a little bit deeper than that. And the intention about what you want to do and what result that you want, and then you surround it with that level of commitment. It doesn't matter what happens on the way to the gold medal or on the way to the win, because something is always going to happen. Something's going to get in the way, whether it's positive or negative. I'm not saying it's always negative, but something's mm -hmm. going to happen from an adversity standpoint that is generally equal and opposite to the power of that clarity and in the intention. It's going to be tested. So bringing it all the way back is that if you set the goal to win, the goal doesn't change. How you get there sometimes and how what kind of adversity you have to embrace, how you're dealing with dramas and distractions and training and injuries, etc. All of that's part of it. But if you hold that powerful intention, it doesn't change. And that becomes your North Star. So as you're moving forward, it also helps to clarify your values. And then your values get very narrow and they become the supporting cast, so to speak, to your intention. So the connection between intention and values is very clear. The goals become the stepping stones or the signposts, or we have to go to this competition to get this many points, to get this next competition, to go to the final, to get da, 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 da. So there's all these things you have to do. That's part of the journey. The intention to win is what keeps them on track. That value system that allows somebody to say, okay, I've had a really crappy week. My body's sore. I don't want to do this anymore. But when they come back to their intention, and that particular intention and that goal doesn't change, that is what can align a team. So for example, one team that's setting their goal to win, they're going to have a lot of pushback. Things are going to happen to test that goal. And it happened for us this year very strongly. And then we had our uh, another team that said, okay, we want to be top five. And sure enough, we had one that won the world championship and one that was top five. And it was quite spectacular because they both got it. And the team that was top five, on the day of the free dance where they placed fifth, they were fourth in the free, fifth overall, uh, the, the man said to me, the gentleman said to me, I just went back on my notes and I didn't say I want to win worlds. I said, I want to be top five. Yes. So when you plant that intention, you don't even realize sometimes and you forget about it, but it's so clear. And in that moment, they were so positive that they were going to be top five, that all the things that happened to get them there, including winning a Grand Prix, including being national championships or champions for the first time, they were top five at the world. So I didn't want to do a whole I told you so thing, but I told them so. <laughs> well, you know, we use sports often as kind of a... I guess, a framework to give context to these conversations. But, you know, when it comes to intention, let's keep going deeper. You know, I want to give actually a business example and talk a little bit about even staff. You know, this one I know very, very well. You know, the stores that we own or store that we now own in Edmonton that we've had for uh, 38 years. And we've got a remarkable team. I don't work in that store. I'm on the call with them once a week. Uh, they're crushing it the past few years. And Really, what I got to is the, my own shift, and it was conscious, but not to the level that I'm really now conscious of intention. And the reality of setting intention with your team and being very clear of what my intention is. But I'll give you, let's just drill it down, pull back a little bit. So I'll use this example. You know, there's a staff member, they want to raise, so they come in, they work really hard. Uh, impress the boss. You know, their goal is I'm just going to work really hard. I'm going to impress the boss. I'm going to show him how hard I work. And then he's going to give me a raise. Well, they do that for a while and they don't get a raise and they get pissed off. The guy next to them or the person that they're working with, their coworker, has an intention. I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to impress the boss, but I'm really going to make sure that every client that walks in the door gets looked after, that I'm creating sales for the business, that I'm really driving the brand and upping the brand and, uh, you know, generating a brand recognition and sales and a really cool customer experience. Well, one day he gets called in the office and the boss goes, you're getting a raise. You're crushing it. Now, what's the subtle difference between that? Well, the subtle difference, of course, is quite obvious, which is one is to the intention is just to get a raise. The other is to get a raise, but by doing so, by do, in doing that, by impressing the clients, growing the business, improving on the brand, that there, in fact, would in, in, uh, 
impress the boss because the boss has got a stronger bottom line, bottom top, uh, stronger top line, and ultimately they then deserve a raise. And it's such a subtle difference because both said we're going to work hard, but even their intentions by how they're working hard is a subtle difference. And we see that on a regular basis with the staff and with the team that we have. And what I've found, especially over the past uh, few years is with our general manager is the clarity that I have with him gives him permission to have the same clarity with me. What is your intention? Like, where do you want to see and where do you want to take the business? You've been with me a number of years. You're now married. You've got a child. Uh, this shifts the dynamics. How does this business look after you? My intention with him, and I say this out loud to him, my intention is to create an awesome lifestyle for you and an income that supports you in maintaining that lifestyle comfortably while you're hitting it out of the park with the store. Let's see how we can drive sales, improve the bottom line, uh, you know, maintain staff, hang on to staff, having longevity. Well, guess what? All of those intentions are coming to fruition because of that clarity. So I just wanted to kind of shine a light on that because many business owners listen to the podcast. And what we see is these subtle differences that we can actually step in with our teams and fine tune, if you will, the thought process, as long as we're communicating really well. That's a great example, because how many times have I heard, you know, if I, if you just pay me more, I'll, I'll work harder. I need yeah. more money. I need more money. And I, I remember hearing that from, from different staff and employees and, and team members. And I'm thinking, yes, I want to make more money too. <laughs> so, but we need a higher intention. We need to know that the customer experience and what we're contributing is going to generate more revenue so that everybody makes more money. So if it's just one thing about making more money, you can make more money in any industry. That's great. But I think what you're saying, Patrick, is that when you're clear on your intention and it's not just about one thing, but that's such a good example because the other, the one employee was making it about how the experience is going to be for the client and how that's going to increase sales so that everybody wins. So there's a broader intention there. I think that gives a lot of um, clarity and a lot of inspiration for like for me, for example, as a, as a business owner to want to make sure that I keep working hard to make sure that person makes more money. So they have a great lifestyle as well. It's interesting. Also, when you think about conversations and relationships and intention, because intention really drives behavior. And I know that if I can just circle back to the ice dancers, for ex example, like they can have the same goal. The team can have the same goal. So the man has a goal. The woman has a goal. They both want to win. But if the intention isn't set in how they're doing it and who they're being, behavior and habits are going to show up and they're going to actually squish the intention. So one of them's going in with a, you know, full on, we're going to work out this, this three times a week, we're going to show up this way, we're going to perform this way, we're going to practice this way. And the other one says they have the same goal, but they're like, Meh. his or her habits don't actually support that intention. So the outcome won't be what they want it to be. So Yes, you can have a powerful intention. Yes, you can make it about purpose contribution and how everybody can win. But if the people that are in, they're saying they have the same intention, but if their habits and their behaviors aren't aligned, it doesn't work. Those are great points. Like, I love this conversation so much because these are the subtleties, right? This is the fine tuning that takes our game to the next level. And I want to share a couple of things around relationships and how that can get really messy. And sometimes we don't even know it's happening that we're doing it or somebody else has a different intention. I'm gonna give you an example. So right now, if Jean-Guy, JG Francoeur, Chief Growth Officer, great friend, and him and I are pretty tight. We share common values. We like the same stuff. We you know, just have lots in common. And right now, if JG said, you know, PF, you need to fly out to, pay, uh, to Peterborough, help me finish building my house or building this house, and, you know, I just could use your skills, your hand, whatever you and I would go. Absolutely. 100 percent. I'm in. And I'd only be doing it with one fundamental intention. Be a good friend. Support JG in having his outcome and getting the outcome that he wants, because I really like his friendship. I appreciate his friendship. I, I love hanging out with him. We always have some great laughs and it's always a great experience. And I want to show up for him because I want to see him succeed. I sincerely want him to succeed. Now, that's one intention and that's my intention. But if I wasn't that guy, I could be going, okay, JD, I'll come on out. Yeah, I can, I can free up some time. Yeah, no worries. I'll come out. But my intention is that 
I'm going to show up and I'm going to be there. And actually JG will now owe me one, mm. you know, at some point I'm going to call that kind of favor, if you will, and say, remember when, well, you know, I could use a little help right now too, which is a different intention and it's a different quality of relationship. And these are the things that I think that a lot of us can step over. I know I have in the past, so I'm certainly, I think both of us have been guilty of it, not knowing uh, that there was an intention, not that it was a bad intention, it's just that we weren't really clear on it. So then we set ourselves up for being let down or disappointed because somebody else, if I had that same, if I had that intention with JG, that it was a favor, I was doing this as a favor and I expect the favor returned as opposed to me just going out there because I want to do that. I want to support JG and having a, a great project and doing all the things that are great. Awesome. Awesome. That's way different than me going out there saying, yeah, I'm going to do this, but he owes me. Totally different intention. And it's not even that one's right or what's wrong. One's wrong. I won't even go there with it. But let's go on deeper because we had this experience and I really want to shine a light on it because this is like hit home for me. Friends we had, we had friends in the past that they were actually good friends and we did a lot of things together. And it was great, but there was always an underlying, I don't know, a sense of either being manipulated or there was just something about it. And it just became like, well, no, that's just how they are. It's who they are. It, was, it wasn't hurtful but it was just didn't feel right. Now, over the years, we grew apart for all the reasons we grew apart, but ultimately it's only in reflection that you realize that their intention was not in alignment with our intention. Our intention was just to be good friends, support each other. You don't owe me anything. You know, I get a lot out of giving, giving and receiving for us is the same thing. We talk about that often. Their intention was totally different. Their intention was to be a good friend, but it was conditional. And there was an expectation that we would reciprocate on certain things in some way and or they were actually friends with us because of who we knew. So they were using us as a in to meet other people and elevated, et cetera. Now, none of that is wrong, but here's the thing. That intention was never stated. And that's the fundamental breakdown in relationships. If the intention would have been stated, in other words, Patrick, Stephanie, you guys know so many cool people. You know, what I'd really like to get out of our relationship is the opportunity to meet these cool people that you guys know, because I can see where it would serve us in our business, you know, that kind of thing. That's a different agreement. It's a different intention. And so I just feel like, ah, there, that point of clarity is the fundamental difference. That's how I'm looking at it. Well, how many times have you heard, whether it's couples, friends or whatever, that they're unintentionally keeping score? Or they've got a checklist, I did this, and then they're going to have to do this for me. Or there's an unexpressed expectation around, for example, I think in the Teal Swan thing I listened to today is that now it's like, oh, well, there's this moving example. And I've used this example so many times. You can do something to help somebody to want to connect and, and, and make sure that that particular project goes well. And you have you know, a good time and you're laughing and talking and crying and poking fun. And at the end, you're, you're hugging and having pizza. Or there's a time where you're wanting to get something from that person. Mm -hmm. And there's a subtle difference in the feeling. There really is. So I mean, how many times have I thought about, you know, I don't keep score, even in our relationship, I've never kept score, we certainly don't have a, you know, one of those lists that a lot like we talked about before the blue, the blue and the pink list, but I've never kept score in relationships. And that's one of the things that I think has, that I've learned over time is that many people do. And that is part of the intention about what you're not just giving in a relationship, which is important, but what you're getting from the relationship. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying to somebody, okay, well, we have this friendship, but we also have a business relationship. So mm -hmm. how do we bring those together? And both of us, you know, get what we need. And it doesn't have to be sub is the word subversive. No, it, like it's under the surface and he, it feels kind of creepy or a little bit manipulative. And it's like, ah, something doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know the alignment or the intentions aren't aligned. Well, here's a perfect example. And so we make it about the other person. Now, if you're having a conversation in your head and it's a circular conversation where you've done something for somebody and you feel like, oh, I'm always doing something for them. I'm never getting it. And they're not doing anything for me. There's no return. There's, it's not reciprocal. And then at some point you have to stop and ask yourself, okay, are they clear on what your intention was? Do they know that you have an expectation that it needs to be reciprocal? So in other words, if you're always doing things for them, quote unquote, and they're not returning the favor, quote unquote, 
they have a different intention of the relationship and the things that you're doing for them. Their expectation is not in alignment with your expectation. So this isn't just about somebody that does something to you. It's how you show up and what are you doing and what is your expectation and what is the intention that you have for the relationship. And, you know, it's so interesting to know that the clearer you are in these subtle nuances of intention, the better and the more powerful the relationship can be. And in a business deal, for example, it can actually create a way more powerful partnership, for example, or the deal and the outcome far more successful if you're clear and if you're clear on the nuances of the intention, what is really driving it? But it takes time to sit down and actually map that out. You have to be clear on it. And that is a game changer. And that's a, also, you know, for, for me, there's a level of personal responsibility in this as well, is that I don't ever want to be a victim to be, you know, to have somebody doing something to me. Or if, if a friendship comes to an end or a business relationship comes to a natural ending and it's time to move on, go back and do a postmortem and go, what did I do? Where am I responsible? How did I, was I not clear on my intention? What did, what, did I have a driving intention? And this is where I, I try not to beat myself up, but do, did I have a driving intention that wasn't a hundred percent clear and clean and pure? Did I have a, a hidden agenda? Yeah. You know, for me to check in on that, because I don't think I um, you go enter business relationships or friendships with a hidden agenda. I try to be as transparent as I can. But honestly, I think if things go south or things don't work, I think it's important to look at what was the intention and was there a hidden agenda or was there something more that I was trying to get out of that relationship by offering what it was that I was bringing to the relationship? So I think for anybody who's listening to this, it's like, okay, so yes, things happen people change, misalignment, you feel something's off, but also step back for a second and say, okay, well, what's my intention in this relationship? What do I want to get out of it? And do I have a hidden agenda? That's the key is that having a thought around it. We go into relationships, we go into business deals. We, you know, you have skaters that compete at a world level, world-class level, and it is the nuances of that intention. So because we're talking about relationship and the feeling of, you know, something doesn't feel right, that's about the other person. But ultimately, when you look at and say, okay, what is the extreme ownership component of that? Because we've gone into relationships. I've gone into relationships. I'll just own it myself. I've gone into relationships without a hidden agenda, but realized that it didn't come. I wasn't going into it as clear as I could have been. And guess what? You know, something went south. There's a misunderstanding. There's work to do in terms of cleaning up that understanding. But if I would have been and stopped for long enough to just acknowledge, it's not like a day's work. It's actually having the thought. It can happen in seconds where you're really clear. What is the intention of this relationship? What is the intention of this friendship? And where am I going with it? So it's not that we always or would be going into it with a hidden agenda, although I think many people do. That's not really how we're built. But ultimately, it can be, I think, pretty innocent just from not being clear. Now, here's the thing about it, is that the clearer you are, the moment in time that you take to recognize what the intention is, really can be a game changer, I think, for the outcome of a relationship, of a business deal, whatever it might be. So um, that's about all I got to say about intentions. You know, the nuances matter. Taking the time to be clear on what the intentions are, the subtle differences between I want to be in the top 10 as opposed to saying I want to win. I mean, gosh, you know, those are almost the same, but they're sure not, uh, they're sure not the same. And uh, the level of clarity is definitely quite big. So to, to wrap it up in that regard is that when you say you want to win and you want to be the best in the world at something, which I've always wanted to be the best in the world at something, you know, and I'm only really good at two things like skating and talking. So I had to figure out a way to be the best in the world at that. But I'm also noticing there's some coaches or people out there that, you know, you come up and say, I want to be the best in the world. I want to win. I want to be on the podium. And then the feedback is, well, don't set your goals too high. You don't want to be disappointed or you don't be careful. You know, that's not really how it works. So I just want to invite anybody who's supporting somebody that says, even a child, when I told my dad at 15 years old that I wanted to be an NHL skating coach, he paused, took a breath and went, good for you. And he just said, good for you. That's, that'll be interesting. He didn't say, you know, you're no, you're, you're a girl, right? So back that long ago, I also had people around me that would 
commit to my intentions as crazy as they sound same as you when I wanted to be an Olympian you didn't say I'm going to go buy you tickets for Torino you said okay what's that going to look like so you honored my intention you supported it without question and then we figured it out from there so I want to invite anyone with parent coach teacher partner business leader is when somebody has a really big goal and they feel it in their gut and they have the courage to say it out loud support them whether you understand it or not, because you could be also supporting them from a place of non-understanding or not understanding what they want, or maybe you've never done it, or there's something that you're filtering through a past trauma. But if somebody trusts you enough to say they have a big goal and they want to commit to the goal, believe them. You know, and as we finish this off, you know, there is a part of what we do within the real estate investment network with, you know, working with clients and then you and I with shift and we just came off think tank or I came off with JG. We did think tank and, and some really cool programs that we put together. But my point is this, when you're sitting down to actually be creative and maybe do a business deal and you're sitting with a potential partner, you have to stop for a moment and say, what's our intention here? Got it. That's our collective intention. What's your individual intention? What do you want out of this? It's like when I'm sitting down with Sean, you know, my general manager, I'm looking at the overarching intention of the business, serve clients, uh, the team, do all those things. But then I have to dig a little deeper because of how he runs the business. And I have to say, well, what's your intention? What's your intention personally? Let me share you with what my intention is for you. Does that work for you? Does that actually light you up? Does that is does that align what you would want to get out of the relationship with me, out of the relationship with the business? Does that align? So you stop long enough to ask the question, well, what are, what's our intention here? I think it's a very mature and uh, really thoughtful approach to going into business and to really managing your team, having that level of conversation. And it gives you more input and feedback as to where they really are. People can't hide, you know, the language is everything. The English language is so powerful that people's intentions come through, not just through their language, but also through their actions, their habits, their behavior. So if you're trying to force the river or trying to have something, an outcome with somebody that says they have the same intention as you also use your intuition, use, you know, when people tell you who they are and show you who they are, believe them. It may be working in the same direction and sometimes it's not. And the sooner you catch which one it is, the more e the easier it is to move forward yeah. or to move apart, which is also very respectful. When a relationship in business or, or personal comes to a close, at least then you can be able to look at it. it sometimes if it's closing and it's painful, but you can see where the intentions maybe then started to diverse, diverge. And I think that's also an important thing to, to mention today. Beautiful. Our intention was to unpack intention, and I feel like we've done that. I Good think job. So. Good job. Thanks, son. That was fun.